think I'll just stand right here at this microphone. I'm not a runner. I do love the Lord, but amen. I like them low and slow and loud and proud, and as long as they're of God, that's, that's how it's made. I, uh, I'm very thankful to be here this morning. I'm very thankful for the message I heard. I like messages that, that liberate you. I like messages that encourage you. I know for me it's very easy to remember and get uh, burdened by the past. Uh, the preacher said he hasn't always been a preacher. I haven't always been a preacher either. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm just an old drug addict, God said. Hey, my friend. Hey, yes, sir. Uh, I don't feel worthy to stand up here. You know, the only reason I do this is because God told me to. Right. And if he didn't tell me to, I wouldn't have done it. But uh, God's in control. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about where we're trying to go, and then I just want to read some scripture. Because he, he just he made me think about something in the Bible, and I just want to say it. Amen. Uh, my family and I are headed to the small country of Northern Ireland. And it is a country that is uh, plagued uh, by its own beauty. It's very deceiving. I know brothers going to Scotland, so they'll know what I'm talking about. Everybody wants to go there. It's beautiful. Everybody's from there, apparently. Uh, everybody's family's from there. Well, you're talking about a country where people have hated, uh, oppressed, and even killed each other. Not in the name of communism, but in the name of Christ. In Jesus' name, they hate each other. In Jesus' name, they oppress each other. Right. We're striving to do three things, first off, to give them the gospel, a clear gospel. 90% of the continent that we're going to is Roman Catholic. Not bad people, just misinformed people. The gospel that is presented to them is a gospel that tells you if you do this, 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 and this, you might make it. The gospel that I present to them is a gospel that says if you'll do one thing, bow your name and repent, you will make it. There is therefore now. No condemnation of them which are in Christ Jesus. Amen. This very moment I'm saved and born again. Not by my works. But according to the grace of God. Amen. According to the goodness of God. Oh, yes. We want to share that to them. We want to give them the freedom to know you don't need a priest to tell you how to read the Bible. Amen. You don't need a priest to tell you how to pray. Amen. You can come yourself. I'm going to know that Mary won't save you. I'm going to know Christ will save you. There's only one name given above the name whereby we must be saved. And it is Christ. Right. Amen. 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 You want to try to plant a church and give people a safe environment. Give them what you have here. A sanctuary. You know, yeah, a sanctuary yeah. is, a, is a safe place. Right. Amen. Yes. You know, the average Baptist that's in Northern Ireland, there aren't many of them. He doesn't want an ex-Catholic in his church because he's been taught his whole life to hate him. He's been taught his whole life that they're the enemy. And vice versa. Right. And so when you go into the church, you have a, 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 basically just a bunch of family groups that are running the church. Right. I'm not downing on them. I'm not, I'm not saying anything. I'm just telling you. The idea uh, that anyone can come. That anybody can come by the blood of Christ and be accepted. Anybody can come and feel safe. Amen. Like you said, they want to just escape the world for a little while. There's not a lot of people there preaching that. I want right. to give people a safe environment. To give, them a chance to, give them a chance to feel safe for a moment. You know, you're talking about a country where you have 60 foot high walls that separate Catholic and Protestant neighborhoods. So that they can't throw bombs at each other. You're talking about a place that has Catholic cabs and Protestant cabs, Catholic diners and Protestant diners. Everything is completely separated and segregated, all in the name of Christ. You know, Christ said He came to unite those who would come unto Him. And uh, that's what we want to let people know. And you have to be very careful about the way you do it, because they're very proud people and they're easily offended. But we're going to go and try to give them that. And lastly, just like I said, try to strengthen some bonds. Show the love of Christ to people. Jesus said, a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another. You know, I think one of the saddest things you've ever seen is that there's a group of people, or two groups of people who claim to be of Christ, hating each other. I find that very sad. I find that, I find that, it makes me, it makes me sad. The Bible says that our God is a God of love, and I'm not preaching a weak God. Right. He'll melt the mountains in His wrath. I know that. When it comes to His children, to His brethren, He said, love one another. Yeah. Be good to each other. Because you're all each other has. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. The world's not going to know you. Yeah. The world's not going to accept you. Yeah. 
You're not going to be the most popular person. You're not going to have the most money. You're not going to have the best life. He said, what you will have is you'll have me and you'll have each other. He said, stay together. That's the hope that we want to bring to them. And that's our message. And I can tell you a lot more, but with the time, I, if you come to me, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I can tell you more about the country. I want to read some Bible. Anybody a little bit. Ephesians chapter 2. You have your Bible. Ephesians chapter 2. I want to give you a, a good look at the grace of God. Consider for a moment what God has done for all of us. Especially, especially me. I don't know about you, but I like, I like to talk about what God has done for me. Amen. I don't really know what, how God brought you to where He brought you. I know if you tell me you're saved, I know, I know that you're saved. But I don't know your story. Because everybody is different. He brings you in different ways. You only say by one way, but we all come by a different path. I want to read you this in chapter 2, beginning in verse number 1. The Bible says, And you, those of us who are saved and born again, have been quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sin. The Apostle Paul said that he quickened you before you were saved. And he, he quickened you. He made you alive. Amen. I'm not preaching Calvinism this morning. No. Amen. Preaching Christianity. Amen. Amen. That's right. The great truth of the matter is that if God had not come to us, we would have never come to Him. You're right. That's right. The Bible says that there is none good, no, That's not one. Right. There's none that understands, which means you can't be smart enough to figure out when you can be saved. That's right. And there's none that seek after God, which means you're not righteous enough to seek after God. Right. I'll tell you now, there's no one righteous enough to know that they're unrighteous. <laughs> right. That's not the way it works. No. God's going to show you. The only way me and you were born again is the fact that God came. Yes. Right. And His grace and His mercy, wherever you were, and He made you alive. Perfect you were dead. Which means you did not desire Him. Right. Has anybody ever tried to have a conversation with a dead man? No. Oh. Does he get very far? No. He's dead. Yeah. Can't talk to you. You can't reason with him. You can't plead with him. You can't beg with him. The only thing you can do if you want a conversation is to make them alive. Somehow. And we know that the Lord is the only one who is able. Yes. When I think about this verse, I think about... Uh, anybody know what a defibrillator is? Yes. Alright, anybody ever seen a show where you've got a dead man and he's hauled into the ER and they take those little paddles and yeah. push them together and they stick it on his chest? And they say, yeah, nothing. Put it on there again. Nothing. Put it on there again. His heart stopped. He was dead. Something came by. Something happened to him. And it made him alive. That is what happened to every one of us. Anybody ever been in church and heard a man say this? I came to church for years and it was like nothing. Went in here, went in one here and out the other. And all of a sudden, one day, it was like, saw my need yeah. to be saved. Amen. And then, here comes your part. Right. You repented right. of your sins. Right. And you trusted in the Lord. Yeah. Good stuff. It is the grace of God Amen. that has saved Amen. us and it saved me. Amen. I know in my own life, it took, it took the grace of God awakening me to this truth. Because right. if He hadn't, I wouldn't be here. Right. The only time I darkened the doors of a church after I got grown is because it was Mother's Day, Easter, or Christmas. Right. When my mama had cried enough tears and begged me to come enough times, finally, my conscience would get the best of me. And I said, I'm not going to listen to her cry anymore. I'll go into church and make her happy and I'll be good for a couple months. So she starts crying again. God is the only reason I'm standing here. God is the only reason. Now you hear me on this. God is the only reason I care that people in Northern Ireland go to hell. Right. So I was left to myself, I wouldn't care what happened to them. I'd care what happened to me and mine, and that's about it. Because that's the heart of man. The grace of God touched me, and it changed me. And whether you know it or not, it was the same way with you. You're right. You may not have been a drug addict, but it doesn't matter. You could have been the most self righteous person on the face of the planet. You could have been helping old ladies cross the street, you could have been doing, spending your time a day, it doesn't matter. In the end, we all are needing the same thing. Right. The grace of God and the touch of God. Amen. Paul said, 
You had been quickened, they were dead in trespasses and sins. Where in time past ye, that means anybody that reads this knows he's talking to you. Yeah. I like that little word ye, so it doesn't matter who you are. If you read it, hey, he's talking to you. Right. Ye, listen. Right. Ye walked according to the course of this world. I can remember those days. Yeah. This world ran my life. This world was all I cared about. He said, you walked according to this world according to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. You know, the world doesn't understand that it's under the influence of something. Right. right. There is a power. And it will be influenced by something. Amen. I think about my three sons. I must give them something because if I don't, the world will. Right. Amen. I must teach them something because if I don't, the world will. Yes, sir. You will learn something. You will follow something. And you will either follow God or you will follow the way of this world. Right. Which is the way that leads to destruction. And he says, we all were like that before Christ came. Every one of us. None of us were saved. None of us were righteous. None of us were great. We all walked according to this course. We all tried to find our peace and contentment in something other than God. Right. I don't know about you, but I chose drugs to find my peace. 